My BF, 38 meters, takes lots of the things I, 30F, say literally, then seems to define me by them. We've been together for 5 years, but only have lived together for 2. It seems like if I say something, he remembers it and holds it against me slash defines me by what I said. An example of this is one time I said I didn't want to buy hot dogs at a food truck because I felt like I could make a good one at home. I didn't explicitly say this, but at the time I was trying to save money. Almost a year later, I said hey we should get hot dogs at a food truck. And he was like weeds but I thought you never wanted to do that because of that one time? Exclamation mark. Maybe the way I worded it implies that I would never get a hot dog out ever again, but I feel like the average person would be able to figure out that I might want to do it in the future. Another example, COVID grocery shopping has been really stressful for me. I express this pretty regularly at the store, sometimes I have to step away for a minute or just go to a part of the store that isn't crowded, but before COVID, I didn't have the levels of anxiety I have now. Now he brings it up like it's a part of my personality. Oh she hates shopping at the grocery store. But I don't. I hate COVID. This doesn't happen with absolutely everything. But it does happen enough to be an issue. The problem is correcting him later when he decides he knows who I am slash defines who I am because I once said I don't want to go to the park but that somehow means I hate the park and would never want to go. But you never go to the park. Question mark I kind of feel like I'm never allowed to change my mind without hearing about it. Do you guys think this is normal? Am I abnormal for expecting him to understand? Am I being the wiener here? Too long didn't read. My BF assigns me personality traits by taking things I say literally, even when it's clear emo I'm saying something out of emotion in the moment. Edit, if I didn't respond, thank you so much for your interpretation of the situation. It helps. Smile. Some people have more rigid minds. I would have a conversation and point out that you're not as absolute as he tends to think you are, and encourage him to check his assumptions now and then by asking you. Or if he sees information that seems to contradict or you bring it up, to adjust his view and be prepared to expect this to happen often. He's a bit old to be learning to do this now, but he might be able to work on this. I don't have any advice for you, but my ex-husband was oddly similar. If I switched which yoga class I was going to that day, I was suddenly someone who could never make up their mind about anything in life. It was always little things too, like yoga class or a hot dog, and I never understood it either. Was it gaslighting? Just him being dense and not really paying attention? Who knows? I don't have any substantial advice. Besides I feel statements, but I actually got a jolt of anger just reading that. That's the one personality type that's like death by 1000 paper cuts for me. He may be slightly neurodivergent and sets these rules as a way to make sense of the world. My brother does stuff like this because he has difficulty with nuance. I've learned to say everything to him with more explanation than others. I usually like that but don't feel like doing that thing right now. He almost always will follow up with questions about the specific criteria that would make that thing possible in the future. It's more emotional labor. But it saves a lot of frustration for both of us in the long run. Yeah, I'd second this. My partner always looks for rules of how I operate. Most of the time it's sweet and she's right about things no one else notices. Sometimes she is quite off, I was just cold and hangry that one time. I had a boyfriend that did this. The root of it was he was he was essentially a giant misogynist who couldn't comprehend that I had my own train of thought and would often try to assign feelings to me. How do we exclude our friends from our accommodation when we move into state for college? Too long didn't read, my friends and I, six of us, are moving into state for college. We wanted to live as six of us but four of us have decided we don't want to live with the other two as they are irresponsible. How do we break it to them? Recently a few of friends and I finished our senior year and all of us are looking to moving into state for college. We, six of us, initially discussed it and come up with the idea to all live in a shared house and split housework slash rent slash transport for convenience sake. However, through several private discussions that we have 
held in smaller groups, we have come to a common conclusion that we really don't want to live with X and Y. This is because a few years ago, when we had a school trip to NYC, we had negative experiences with X and Y. They have shown that they are really reluctant to do any chores or clean up after themselves. Furthermore, X and Y, while friends, are both really ill-tempered and constantly fight over the smallest things, it gets very heated and the four of us would rather not deal with this on a daily basis. As they have shown to be both irritable and irresponsible, we have been discussing getting a four-person home without X and Y. The only problem is that the four of us have agreed that we would like to stay friends with X and Y however we definitely do not want to spend the next few years living with them. What is the best way to let them know without hurting their feelings? As they have been very excited at the possibility of all of us living together. The big problem being that we would very much like to stay friends with X and Y as they are good people at heart to be around and we enjoy their company and friendship and we feel that letting them know would jeopardize our entire friendship and make them feel as if we betrayed them. I'd maybe focus on the cleanliness aspect over the you guys are insufferable aspect. I've told people I don't want to live with them in the past, because I know we have mismatched expectations of cleanliness, being both the tidy and messy one, relatively, at different times. Every time they'd understand. you looking for a unicorn solution there isn't one. The real problem here is there is a problem that you've ignored in the friend group for too long. The adult thing to do is be upfront and tell them, and tell them exactly why. Don't be surprised if they are angry and resentful about not being told their behavior was jeopardizing that future. Especially if it's been talked about since you originally made the plan. You are not going to be able to exclude two people from an original group plan without causing, at minimum, some hurt feelings, and as you noted the two being excluded are known for volatile tempers, you should prepare yourself for the possibility that friendships may end. Do everyone a favor though, be honest with them about why the larger group has had a change of thoughts. Everyone needs to have these grown up moments. Two need to know there are consequences for being jerks or slobs and the four need to realize that being open and honest when dealing people is just the right thing to do. Good luck! Exclamation mark. There's likely no way of going about this without ruining your friendship with them. Either figure out a way to split the chores and have them live with you, or accept that they might not want to be friends after this. Personally, I would choose the latter. You need to just tell them as soon as possible. They are going to feel betrayed and hurt, but they will feel far more betrayed if you wait to tell them as that will make finding alternate housing much more difficult. Also, logically, when you care for and respect someone you give them serious news ASAP. Be prepared for both of them to go cold toward all of you for a while, the four of you are going to have to make a big effort to continue to invite them to things and include them in conversations if you want to stay friends. The other two might test your commitment by ignoring you or declining to hang out while they grapple with the they're just inviting me because they feel guilty thing. If you intend to stay friends with them then you can, but you all will need to be okay with extending invitations over and over until the other two understand they really are wanted as friends, just not as roommates. If you're going to have the conversation all six of you then you need to be prepared for some bad reactions, and be prepared to not take them personally. There isn't an easy way to do this but it will get harder the longer you wait. Good luck. Edit, typos. So many typos. I, 35F, am concerned about how my partners, 30M, sleep habits will affect the rest of our lives. My boyfriend and I have been together for three years. He really wants to get married and start a family. I love him a lot but I have some concerns about raising kids with him. One of the concerns involves his sleep patterns. Without any other obligations, he will easily sleep 11 to 12 hours per night, every night. If he has to wake up for something after 8 hours, he can do it. He is extremely punctual, but he is an ogre in the morning and sometimes will be cranky throughout the day. He is a medical student and has a lot of flexibility in his schedule so he manages to get the sleep he needs. I am really worried about how he is going to handle. 1. Residency 2. 
having a baby who wakes up at night. He has reassured me that it will be fine and he will find a way to make it work. I want to believe him but I also don't want to put myself into a situation that I can't get out of. So I keep stalling him on this. The other issue is that he is a daily marijuana user. I really believe that his excessive sleep is related to that. I don't use marijuana often but when I do it puts me right to sleep. He denies that is the issue and says that if he takes a few days off then it doesn't affect his sleep at all. I don't think that is convincing. I don't want to be controlling but I feel like we are approaching an ultimatum. I think if he wants to get married and have a baby he needs to stop with daily marijuana for a period of a few years, at least. And hopefully that will improve his sleep. Is an ultimatum like that unhealthy for the relationship? Should I just trust him and try moving forward with the relationship despite his sleep issues? Am I overthinking this issue? Too long didn't read, boyfriend sleeps excessively and I think it is due to heavy marijuana use. It makes me hesitate to get married and have a baby, should I put my foot down with an ultimatum or just move forward and see what happens? Wait. He needs 11 to 12 hours of sleep a night? That could be a legitimate health problem like sleep apnea or narcolepsy. If he's going to insist it's not the weed, well, try to get him to see a sleep specialist, because it's abnormal. Even if it does turn out to be the marijuana, hearing from a doc might get him to actually take the problem seriously. Talk to him about it. Ask him to try giving up weed and waking up after 8 hours of sleep. Also, as a med student, I'm surprised he's okay with weed since he could get drug tested and get in trouble potentially. Don't know if it's different in a state where it's legal but still. Residency will only be harder. If he's serious about marriage and you have your concerns he should be willing to show you he can do it now. Has he had his B12 levels checked? I have a B12 deficiency and if I don't tend to it I'll easily sleep 10 hours a day and have a nap too. My mood isn't great either and my general get up and go attitude is gone. If I have an appointment to get to slash work I will 100% get up though. Also get vitamin D checked as it can also affect sleep slash mood. Maybe he should have a sleep study done. There might be something wrong he is not aware of. My sister is a resident and she's lucky to get more than 6 each night. Pulls 40 plus hour shifts regularly. If he is really sleeping 12 hours a night, then something is wrong. That's too much. 